In Unit 1, we looked at a very specific case of how to use the slope of the secant line um, to find the average rate of change, and specifically we looked at the um, average velocity of a position function. And then we talked about the fact that if we let the increment um, or the interval get smaller and smaller, uh, that we would that that secant line would approach a tangent line and we said that the slope of that tangent line would be the instantaneous rate of change or the instantaneous velocity. And now we're going to look at that idea in a more broad sense and we're going to talk about the derivative of a function. And so I'm going to start off by just drawing a just drawing a curve and we're going to pick a point on that curve and we'll let that the x-coordinate of that point be C and we know that at that point the y-coordinate would be F of C and then we're going to pick another point on that curve and what that point is going to be is going to be C plus some amount, some change in X. So C plus delta X is a terminology. And that means that the distance from here to here is delta X. So the amount of, um, you know, the, the distance from C to C plus um, delta X is delta X. And I could draw a secant line through those two points. And we know that the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change. And to find the average rate of change, or, or the slope of that line, I'd want the change in y over the change in x. Now I know that, that this value over here on the y-axis will be f of c plus delta x. And so th the change in y over the change in x will be this. It would be the change in y, which would be the f of c plus delta x, minus the f of c, right? so that's y2 minus y1, over x2, which is c plus delta x, which is right here, minus x1, which is c. And that can be simplified as f of c plus delta x minus f of c over delta x. Okay, the c's would cancel, cancel out. And so this is the slope of, the, the formula for the slope of a secant line of just a general function um, that, that secant line goes through the x value c, uh, the ordered pair c f of c, and the ordered pair c plus delta x f of c plus delta x. Those are your x and y coordinates. Now, that would give me the average rate of change. Um, but now, so this is called, this is the slope of the secant line, and what I want to find is the slope of the tangent line, in which case I want to let delta x get extremely small. So if I let delta x get really, really small, I basically I'm letting delta x approach zero. The, this way, if I let delta x approach zero, I can see that this point, the x values are going to approach c, and my secant line is going to approach a tangent line. Now I can, uh, I have a, an interactive figure that I want to show you that does a much better job of sliding the values, um, so I'm going to I'm going to turn that on and show you, and we'll come back to this. All right, here's the interactive figure. The only difference in their their picture and my picture uh, is that I use C as an interior point, and this particular book uses A. I like to use A for my left hand endpoints and B for my right hand endpoints, and to be consistent, use C for an interior point. But you can still you can still see this idea. So here is my point. P. I have a secant line through P Q, okay, point P and point Q, and what I want to do is let A approach, or this A plus H, I want to let it approach A, and I do that by letting H get really, really small. Now, what they're doing here is instead of using delta X, they're using the letter H. So we're letting H equal delta X, and what's happening is we're going to let that, we're going to use the slider, and we're going to let h get really, really small. And as I do that, you can see that now the secant lines are approaching a tangent line. And the slope of that tangent line is the, 
would represent the instantaneous rate of change. It also represents what we call the derivative. So coming back to the formula, we have um, the derivative at a point, c f of z, the notation is f prime of c, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that's one of the notations that you can use for the derivative of a function at a point. The limit as delta x approaches zero of f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x. Now we're going to let h equal delta x, and this really is just about making this a little simpler to write. You know, some books stick to the delta x notation, most books use h for your change in x, and so as I let my change in x get really, really small, that's the same thing as letting h approach zero, right? the derivative at a point okay, is denoted by f prime of c equals the limit as x approaches h of f of c plus h minus f of c over h. Now, for those of you who are in physics or have had physics, you're going to have to bear with us and you're going to have to stop using the shortcuts for a little bit. Uh, we're going to work on using the, what's called the definition of a derivative to find derivatives and then we'll look at some shortcuts. All right, so let's slide down uh, and look at a specific example. Okay, we want to find the derivative of f of x equals x cubed at x equals 1. So that would be my c value. So I want to find f prime of x if f of x equals x cubed. Um, I want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. I want to find the slope of the curve at x equals 1. I want to find the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at x equals 1. All of these expressions mean the same exact thing. Okay, they represent the, the derivative of a function at a specific value. Those are the different ways that I can ask the same question. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, use the formula. So I have f prime of c, I'm going to say I'm looking for f prime of 1 is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0, same thing as saying delta x approaches 0, of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. At this point, there's a whole lot of algebra to do here. And I'm going to do this off to the side. Um, and why don't you take a minute to find f of 1 plus h. Pause the video and find f of 1 plus h if f of x equals x cubed. Then start the video again and compare your f of 1 plus h with mine. So f, um, f of 1 plus h is 1 plus h cubed. When you FOIL this out, do your distributive property, you end up with 1 plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed. I'm going to replace the 1 plus h cubed with that. Then I need to subtract uh, f of 1, which is just 1 cubed. So if f of 1 just equals 1 cubed, that's 1. So minus f of 1 all over h. So when you use this formula, all right, um, usually nice things happen. And so the 1 minus the 1 is going to cancel. And I'm allowed to factor out an h. When I factor out an h, I'm left with 3 times or h times 3 plus 3h plus h squared over h, and the h's cancel. When I evaluate this limit, I plug in the 0, and, and by the way, initially, if I plugged in 0 in the, numer in, in the first step, I left that out. If you plug in 0 in the first step, you're going to get 0 over 0, which, as you know, is indeterminate. So that's why we need to manipulate this. So when you plug in 0, this term, any term that has an h in it is going to 0. So the answer is 3. So what we just found out is that f prime of 1 is equal to 3. That also means that the derivative of f at 1 is equal to 3. So if the derivative of f of x at x equals 1 is equal to 3, that also means that 3 is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. Um, we also say it's the slope of the curve, and we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, it also is the instantaneous rate of change of f at x equals 1. All right, so now that we've found the derivative of a function at a point, 
what we'd like to do is come up with a formula and that instead of finding the derivative at a specific point it would be great to come up with a formula that would allow us to find the derivative um, at any value of x. So we're looking for more of a derivative function as opposed to a value. So we'll do that in the next video.